This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. This chapter covers spatial enhancement of Landsat 8 imagery. As a reminder from Chapter 17 on radiometric enhancement, image enhancement denotes the processing of remotely sensed imagery to adjust brightness values, which improves the image's visual qualities for a specific purpose. Brightness values of individual pixels are changed to improve color balance, brightness, contrast between pixels or other elements associated with image display. While radiometric and spectral enhancement operate on individual pixels, spatial enhancement modifies the pixel's brightness values based on the values of neighboring pixels. This chapter demonstrates two different processes for spatial enhancement. The first process, a dynamic process, changes the image within the viewer itself, but does not change the original file. The second process uses tools in the ArcGIS Pro toolbox to create a new image file. This video provides a very basic discussion of image enhancement techniques. See your text for more information. We begin with the Chapter 15 project that you saved. Go ahead and set the band combination to color infrared. Be sure that the workspaces are set to the appropriate project file folder. Your environment should look like mine here. I have two copies of the image, so I can use the swipe tool to compare different techniques. You can do the same if you want to try it. Let's begin with techniques for dynamic spatial enhancement. Select your image and go to the Raster Layer Menu Appearance tab. Click the down arrow by Resampling Type. There are a bunch of options here. Let's zoom in to the City of Roanoke's airport and apply some of the resampling tools. Nearest Neighbor is selected by default in the drop-down list since it's already used with this image. It assigns each pixel the value of the cell closest to it. If we check the layer's properties, you can see that the method used for display is resampling nearest neighbor. Let's choose bilinear from the list. Bilinear creates a smooth looking result because it averages the brightness values of pixels from four neighboring cells. Again, this is a dynamic method. It just changes the display in the viewer. Can you see the difference? Here I'm using the swipe tool to compare the original image on the bottom with the bilinear enhanced image on the top. Notice the original image is pixelated. The outlines of the individual cells are visible as a jagged edge. But in the bilinear enhancement image, the runways and nearby highway now appear to be a straight line. The bilinear algorithm has blended the pixel corners. Now let's select cubic, which interpolates value from the surrounding 16 cells. Notice it creates a sharper looking airport area. Select majority. This is not a good resampling method for the airport area because this option chooses the most frequent value from the surrounding four cells to essentially smooth the image. So if definitive boundaries are needed for the analysis, this is not the one to use. As usual, the method chosen to enhance an image will depend on the purpose of the project. Now reset the image to the default, nearest neighbor. Moving on to the second technique, let's learn how to spatially enhance an image using the Spatial Analyst tools. These tools are not dynamic. They create a new file with your spatially enhanced image. Let's begin with convolution filtering, which is a process that averages small sets of neighboring pixels across an image. This filtering changes the spatial frequency characteristics of an image. Click on the Analysis tab and then Tools. In the geoprocessing window, search for filter. 
Choose Filter from the results. Be sure it's from the Spatial Analyst tools. Under Filter Type, there are two options, Low Pass and High Pass. If you click on the eye for information, you'll get more information on these two types of filters. In short, a low pass filter smooths edges and a high pass filter enhances edges. Let's compare these. Choose your input raster and name the output raster. I'm going to name the output raster filter underscore low to indicate which process was used to create the new image. Before I click Run, I'm going to check that the extent is set to default in the environments, if you're following along. I'll do the same to create an image with the High Pass filter. Low pass results in smoothing of the image. Urban areas are clearly visible. Remember, high pass enhances edges. So in the city of Roanoke, roads, the airport runways, and some buildings are visible. Now let's search for and open the Focal Statistics Spatial Analyst tool. With this tool, more decisions must be made. The first two decisions regard the neighborhood, those cells that are going to affect the new value of each cell in the new image. First, the shape of the neighborhood. The shape does not have to be a rectangle, as you can see here, but we'll choose it. The second decision is how big to make the neighborhood. In other words, how many pixels surrounding a specific pixel are used to recalculate that pixel's new value. That was a lot of pixels. The default setting is 3 by 3 which we'll use for this run. The third and final decision is which statistics to use. Mean is the default and the one we'll use here. You can see there are many options in this list. Now let's run the filter. Choose the input raster. I'm naming the output raster rect 3 by 3 to indicate which filter was run on this image. Next let's try a rectangle neighborhood size 5 by 5 with a mean statistic. And then rectangle 9 by 9 median. Note that the larger the neighborhood, the longer the tool takes to process. And the results show more smoothing. A 9 by 9 neighborhood to calculate the new values means each value is more like other values. Now try circle. Let's have a circle with a radius of 6 and median statistic. We have plenty of examples. Be sure to explore others on your own. Now that the tool has run using several different parameters, notice the range of digital numbers is different for each result, since the greater number of pixels used as the neighborhood results in smaller ranges of values. To do a visual examination of differences, collapse the symbology in the contents pane and use the swipe tool. Let's turn off all but the two images we want to compare. The 5x5 five five neighborhood is much more defined than the 9x9 nine nine neighborhood. Can you imagine why? Continue to explore different filtering methods, comparing the new images using swipe and comparing the digital numbers in the contents. In this chapter, a composite image was used to complete the spatial enhancement, but single bands can also be used. And remember that ultimately, the choice of spatial enhancement methods is a decision dependent upon which is best for the specific project. Let's now proceed to the final image enhancement chapter, chapter 19, Spectral Enhancement of Landsat 8 Imagery.